Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 120 with me Craig Barton. Now just like you shouldn't have favourite students, I guess you shouldn't really have favourite topics in mathematics and you should approach every single topic with equal passion and so on so, so the students don't have any negative uh, preconceptions coming into topics. However, we've all got our favourites and one of my all-time favourite topics is factors and multiples. Now for the last five or six years my favourite way of, of looking at facts and multiples, my go-to resource if you will, and it remains my go-to resource, is the Factors and Multiples game from Enrich. And I've put a link to my kind of spin on that, my take on that in the in the resource of the week page um, when I created my rich maths task number two, the Facts and Multiples game. And I've put loads of, if we just look here for show more reviews, I've put loads of kind of probing questions and modifying ways of modifying the rules and so on. And for the rest of my teaching career, and probably once I retire from teaching, I will still look for opportunities to do the Facts and Multiples game, probably with friends and family, until I'm, until I'm dead, basically. Absolutely adore that. And I didn't think there was room in my life for another fact and multiples activity, but I was wrong because along comes Gonzito or Gon. Gonzinto, I'm saying it wrong. Gon G Gozinto. <laughs> Gozinto, I'm gonna go for. And it's part of this this resource, Table Learning Games, which has been uploaded by Gaza M and it's absolutely wonderful. So let me show it you. And um, then more importantly, let's talk about how to make it a rich probing um, engaging task. So uh, there are a load of different versions of it. This is the most simple single dice version. Um, and essentially, it's a glorified version of Connect 4 in, in its most basic form. So, two player game, students take the turn, roll a dice, um, and they've got to try and find um, multiples of the number that they've rolled. And if they find a multiple, they can cross it off. So, for, for example, I know I'm being patronizing here, but say you rolled a 5, then students could cross off anything that was a multiple of 5, 10, 45, and so on. But they can only cross off one number once, and then it's the next player's go, and they they roll the dice and again they look for multiples of their number and the winner is the first person to get four in a row. Now at its most basic that is a classic low barrier task where students can have success early on and there's potential to offer them support by giving them a times table grid or a calculator or whatever next to them and students will be engaged by the competitive nature and as I say the relatively low entry criteria. But then how do we take it further? Well, just like the facts and multiples game, there's lots of potential. And what I've done in the, uh, this this is my kind of working document here, but you'll see this on the on the resource of the week page. Just could come up, just top of my head with a few questions that students could, could say. So firstly, there's a um, chance for modification. Use one dice or use two dice. And there's lots of versions with, with two dice and that adds a new degree of complexity to it. You could use a six-sided dice or a 10-sided dice just to spice things up a bit. You could win if you got four in a row or five in a row. What are the rules that you're going to do if there's no winner? And instead of playing kind of against each other, why not players could play to try and get the longest chain, longest continual chain, maybe get a bit of colours involved there. So there's a few little modifications and they're all suggested by the author themselves. And then I've tried to come up with a few, uh, few of my own. So what about this? What number can you get in the most ways? What about the least ways? What's the easiest board that a player could design? And what about the hardest board? And what makes boards easy and hard? What's the most useful number you could roll on your dice? And what's the, I've put word number there, but I meant worst number. Let's change that live there. Uh, what rule change would you bring in to change the game? Um, and what, as soon as you start asking those probing questions, for me, and again, I, I sound like a flipping broken record here, but that for me is proper differentiation. Every child starts on the same task at the same level, and then through probing questions and different lines of inquiry, students start going off in different directions with the task. So there it is. As I say, I've, I've all, we'll always have a soft spot for the facts and multiples game. But there is a, a place in my heart for, if I could say it right, Gozinto. So give it a go. Um, if you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful, come back and, and leave a review on the on the resource page. But also, and perhaps more importantly, if you found a different way of playing it or a different probing question or a different rule change or something like that, then share that as well. Because then the resource and the activity just gets richer and richer and better and better. So, hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful, and I shall return with a fresh Resource of the Week next week. Take care, and farewell for now.